Hello world, I'm Benjamin and this is Source Decoded. Welcome back to another installment of JavaScript is Easy. Now first off, I need to give a shout out to Bad Cat Design who commented on the last video with a recommendation for a way to experiment with JavaScript without having to install Node.js and mess around in the terminal. There is an app called RunJS, which you can download from runjs.dev. And you install it on your computer, and it's super simple. On the left side, there's a code editor that you can type JavaScript into. And on the right side, the results appear. Way simpler than installing Node.js and figuring all of that out, which you probably are going to have to do at some point anyway. But RunJS uh, is a nice little sandbox, and I think I'll be using it quite a bit in the future. Thanks again, Bad Cat Design, and thanks to everyone who comments on these videos. Now, as promised, today we're gonna to talk about my favorite JavaScript feature, functions. Functions are really powerful, and I'm not going to be able to say everything that I wanna say about them in one video. So today we're going to start with a description of what a function is, and two of the fundamental uses for a function. That's the ability to give a piece of code a name, and reuse and abstraction of code. Now a function is pretty simple. It's a piece of code that has a name that you can refer to in other places in your program. To illustrate this, let's go back to our example about calculating sales tax for something that might be on sale in a store. Now when we left off, our code might have looked something like this. We have some constants for the tax rate, the price of noodles, and the total price of the noodles, and then we do some math to figure all that out, and then that leaves us with noodles total, which we can, we can console log out. Now this is this is all fine and good, um, but chances are we need to calculate the price of more than one thing at the store. So we're going to take this piece of code essentially and repeat it over and over for everything that we might want to buy. And that might look something like this. We've still got the tax rate, but we've got a price and a total for every item. And looking at this, it's hard to see really at a glance what's going on here because there's a lot of little details about how we're calculating the prices of all of these things. At the bottom, we can see that we are getting a grand total from adding up the total from all of the individual items and then console logging it out. So this part makes sense, but at a glance, it's kind of hard to see what all of this stuff up here is for. It would be nice if we could break this apart into smaller pieces and give every piece a name that kind of described what it was doing. And we can do that with a function. To make a function, I can say const get noodles total equals function parentheses curly braces, and then I'm just going to copy this stuff, drop it in there, and then add at the bottom return noodles total. And that's it. Now I have a function that we've named get noodles total. And, and it does the work of calculating the noodle total. Now to use this function, I just have to come down to where I want to know the total price of noodles. I'm gonna say const noodles total equals get noodles total. I'm going to use the name of the function and then add some parentheses to invoke it or to run the function. When this happens, JavaScript is going to run this code and then when we get down here to this return, it's going to give back the value of noodles total to whoever called it. It's almost like this part right here gets replaced with the value of this when the function is done running, and that's what gets assigned to this constant right here. Now you might have noticed that I've used the same name, noodles total, down here and up here and I've declared them both as a const. Why am I allowed to do that twice? This has to do with scoping, which we'll go into a little bit more in the future. For now, just understand that everything that happens inside of the function is hidden from the outside world. So we don't know what the price of noodles is outside of this function. And this noodles total is different from this noodles total. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that to the rest of these items and make functions for the rest of them. And that's gonna look something like this. We've got get noodle total, get pepperoni total, get cheese total, and so on. 
Down here at the bottom, we can read this kind of like a story. I'm going to call get noodle total to find the noodles total and get pepperoni total to find the pepperoni total. And once I've got all of those totals, I'm going to add them all up and put that value in a const called grand total and output it. This is what the program is doing. And then up here, we have the details of how it is doing it. I call this practice of separating the details of what's going on from the kind of story that the program is telling the separation of what and how. And when you're giving instructions to a friend, you probably actually already do this. If you're trying to describe how to get from here to your grandmother's house, you don't go into every single little detail about how you move the steering wheel and what you do with the pedals in the car or which city bus stop you wait at to catch which bus to get to your grandma's house. You probably give more general instructions like, I live in this city, my grandma lives in that city, and so I head north on whatever highway and to get to that city. And you can get away with that because you have kind of a shared understanding about all of the little details that are involved in that process. A computer, though, doesn't have that shared understanding, and it needs all of those details. So separating what and how is kind of a compromise between you and the computer. It's how you can organize all of these little details that the computers need in a way that a human can kind of make sense of. Remember that programs should be written to be read by humans as well as communicate some instructions to the computer. You're probably not the only one who's gonna to have to read this code and even if you are, you should write it so that when you come back to it in five years and you don't remember anything about your logic or what you were trying to accomplish, you should still be able to read it. And functions are an important tool in making this work. With a function, and the ability to give a piece of code a name, then you can organize it in such a way that you can read it pretty much like a book. Programs are multi-layer stories too because we need different layers to package up this detail. If you're describing to your friend how to get your grandmother's house, your friend can keep drilling deeper on details that he might not understand. How do you get to grandmother's house? Well, over the river and through the woods. Well, how do you get to the river? Well, you leave town heading north on Highway 11. Well, how do I get from my house to Highway 11? Well, the fastest way to do that is to take this road to that, and so on and so forth, until technically your friend could ask you, how fast you go on any particular street or what you're doing with the pedals in the steering wheel. The same principle applies when you're organizing your code. Now, let's go back to our sales tax example and explore the other superpower feature of the humble function, the parameter. I said at the beginning that one of the uses for a function was reuse. And of course you can reuse that piece of code by just invoking the function over and over again. But these functions we have right now are kind of silly. They're really indistinguishable from the values that they calculate. Once we've calculated the value, we can just hang on to that const we held it in and reuse that instead of calling the function. The reuse we're talking about is abstract reuse. This function right here answers a very specific question, and that is, how do you find the price of a bag of noodles? Now, what if we changed this question a little bit and instead of how do you find the price of a bag of noodles, how do you find the price of an item? Now that's a little more interesting. The first question is concrete because it deals with a specific thing, a bag of noodles. The second question is abstract because it deals with a whole class of things. If we can figure out how to find the price of a thing, then that's a function that we can reuse over and over again in lots of different situations. So if we look at our concrete functions here, we'll see some things that are different and some things that are common. The things that are different are the base price of the item without tax and the names that we're giving to these constants in here. The common thing is this math that we do to those prices. So let's write a new function. We'll call it get item total and let's go ahead and put the common things in here and this time we'll give the constants names that aren't so specific
Now we still need to get the price of the item, but instead of build that into the function, we're going to accept that as a parameter. A parameter is a special kind of variable that gets passed into the function like this that you can use inside the function. Now we'll extract the actual prices for these things from outside the functions and pull them to the top. And when we're done, it'll look something like this. We've deleted quite a few lines because we're now able to reuse this get item total logic. Now when we invoke this function, we're going to hand in the price of the thing that we're calculating the price with tax for. So now the noodles total is, let's get an item total for the price of noodles, which is defined up here. The price of noodles is going to come up into the function as price. We'll run this math. The result will be item total. We return item total, and that item total gets put into noodles total. And then we do that again for each of the items. Now, I hope you can see why this is so powerful. We can find common things in our code, abstract them out into the functions. Not only is it shorter, it's actually easier to read and in a lot of ways easier to think about. One of the hard things about programs, one of the skills that you develop is learning how to correctly abstract things away so that you can reuse them. You can take this too far for sure and you'll discover that on your own, but get it right and uh, this is where programming starts to become really beautiful. Now I like what we've done here except for one thing. Where I live, there are actually different tax rates for different things that you can buy. There's a food tax and a non-food tax. To account for that in our program, we could make another function and have a get food item total and a get non-food item total. But you can probably imagine that the logic inside of those two functions is gonna be pretty similar. Instead, we can use this same function, modifying it just a little bit. Instead of just taking price, now let's tell the function that it can take a tax rate. And then instead of this tax rate up here, we'll say we have food tax rate, and that's say 4%. And the non-food tax rate is 6%. Now when we invoke these functions down here, we also hand in the tax rate. And when we're all done, it might look something like this. Now that I've abstracted out the tax rate and made that a parameter, I can buy non-food stuff like bricks and use that same function, get item total, to calculate the price with tax of bricks taking into account whether it's a it's taxed at the food rate or the non-food rate and then add that to my total so that is an introduction to functions you know how to make one and you know two of the most important reasons to use them when it comes down to it programming is about these details we have to give an insane number of details to the computer to make it understand what we want it to do. And the hard part about programming is not really figuring out what those details are, it's organizing them in a way that we, the humans, can understand. The real art of this craft, the thing that some engineers go their whole careers without mastering, is not a language or a specification or a protocol, it's the ability to organize code well. And the humble function is your first tool in solving that problem. That's all for now. You'll see me in the next one.